Namaste. So it's a very pleasant evening here in Sri Lanka. I'm enjoying being here. <laughs> it's very comfortable, very convenient compared to being way up in the mountains, far away from everything. Where, um, all the conveniences of life are available here, which makes things easy for an old guy like me. <laughs> Actually, of course, I don't think of myself as an old guy. I think of myself as a bright youth because that's the way I feel. And a lot of it has to do with this philosophy of monism, or that's the wrong word, adweta, not two. It's not mon, it's mono means one. It's not oneness. It's not two-ness, non-duality. So we already went over the reason for that because in Brahman, there are no boundaries. So there is no other. How can you say there is only one when there is no two? Non-duality, see? So in other words, nobody's keeping score. <laughs> or at least Brahman and Shiva, uh, they're not keeping score. Because they are non-dual, Advaita. Now, there are a lot of people who claim to know what Advaita is, but they can't talk on this level. They say, oh yeah, it's all one. That means I'm God and I can do whatever I want. But that's not correct. As soon as you say I, that means a separate individual. Now, of course, it's true that in conversation, we use the word I to refer to both the self, with a capital S, as Brahman, and as the empirical individual. And sometimes it's hard to tell the difference, but you have to look into the context to get the meaning. And if, if I'm talking about, I'm going to make a video tomorrow, I'm talking about myself as, a, as an empirical individual, as a doer. But if I'm saying, I have realized Brahman, aham brahmasmi, I'm talking about I, myself, as the self. And we went over this in an earlier video, how everything looks different depending on what state of consciousness you're in. So since all states of consciousness are available to all beings simultaneously all the time, then, I don't know, maybe language, our language should have some kind of a structure like, uh, you know, like case endings, singular and plural. Huh? One cat, two cats. <laughs> but referring to consciousness. So instead of having to say, I, as a separate empirical individual, think, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you could just say, I, four, or something like that. Or I3, if you're in dream consciousness, Swapna. I2, if you're in Sushupti. And I1, if you're talking about yourself, with a capital S, as Brahman. Just an idea. Anyway, today we're going to look at the next verse in the uh, Mandukya Upanishad Karika. Vita Raga Bhaya Krodhaya Prunibir Veda Payagai Nirvikalpo Yayang Drishta Prapancho Pashamo Dvayaha. The wise who are free from attachment, fear, and anger, and who are well versed in the meaning of the Vedas, verily realize this Atman as totally devoid of all imaginations, such as prana, etc free from the illusion of the manifold and non-dual. See, I was leading up to that non-dual. <laughs> Advaya. 
So this is a very interesting verse. Vita Raga Bhaya Krodhaya without attachment, fear, or anger. Vita means without. Raga means attachment. Bhaya means fear and Krodha means anger. So in other words, those who have realized Brahman display all the eight qualities that we've talked about in several different videos as the qualifications of one who is even trying to realize Brahman. What to speak of those who have actually realized. And furthermore, Prunyabhir, Vedapaya Gai, they have understood the purport, the deep meaning of the Vedas, that everything is Brahman. There really is no phenomenal world. It's only an appearance. It's an illusion, like the snake in the rope, or the, or the water in the desert, the lake in the desert. So this illusion is based on imagination. Now, it's really interesting the ways they say it. Nirvikalpo hyayam drushta. They see that there is no imaginations. Imaginations. And the word that's used to mean imaginations is prapanchaha. Prapanchaha. Prapancha really means like a flood of ideas. The Buddha used the word very, in a very interesting way to describe what happens by association when the mind gets attached to an idea. Ideas are generally called sankhara, and they're based on desires, which is in turn based on ignorance. So when we uh, latch on to a, a desire or we create a mental intention, sankhara, this causes a prapancha. A prapancha is like a chain reaction. One thought sparks another thought, and those spark two more, and then five more come because of that, and pretty soon you're drowning in thoughts. So the Buddha compared prapancha to a waterfall. He said that uh, the mind, once it gets going, once it gets attached to something, can spin out these thoughts forever. You have to cut the root. Uh, stop the sankharas. Sankara nirodho is one of the ways that he describes nibbana, or nirvana. Sankara nirodho, complete disappearance of sankara or thought forms, the transformations of the mind. And Patanjali says the very same thing in his definition of yoga. That the, the mind stops chitta vritti nirodaha, he says. The mind stops all transformation and remains in its original state. That's yoga. Not standing on your head or doing the downward dog. <laughs> That's ridiculous. But real yoga means union with the Supreme, in which the mind stops all of its modifications. Prapancho pasamo dvayaha. Advayaha, huh? Prapancha upashamo advayaha. That the reality is no longer seen as dualistic, as a, a manifold, as the translation of the previous verse talked about. And that's in the last video. So let me read the translation again. The wise who are free from attachment, fear, and anger 
and who are well versed in the meaning of the Vedas, verily realize this Atman as totally devoid of all imaginations such as prana, etc., free from the illusion of the manifold and non-dual. Does that make more sense now? So this is what we're trying to attain. And it's interesting that he talks about imaginations such as prana. Prana is the energy that rises up the spine as kundalini, which is a snake. So he's saying that <laughs> this is all illusion. This is all imagination. This is all prapancha. This is all a flood of ideas based on duality. It has no actual reality. It's simply an illusion. It's something that we make up because we want to be an individual. We want to have a separate body, an individual form. And then we have all kinds of desires in relation to that form. But the form itself is temporary. And so it's going to disappear. So if we become attached, raga, then we're going to lament. Because the body is not going to be able to satisfy all these desires. That means unless we get the mind under control, and stop this prapancha, this waterfall effect of desires based on desires, based on thoughts, based on thoughts, you know, and so on and so on. This chain reaction, all based on the original thought of, I want to be separate, I want to be an individual I. Unless we can stop that by letting go of I, by stopping the mind, then we're always going to be in delusion and suffering. So, of course, then the question is, how do we do that? And the answer is, we can't do that. <laughs> because as soon as we conceive ourselves as the doer, we're reinforcing the individual ego again. So, in other words, this is the utility of worship, such as Shiva Puja, as we've been going over in great detail in the Shiva Purana series. You have to do some kind of puja of some god. It could be Shiva, it could be Shakti, it could be Vishnu. Those are the best. But really, any form of god or goddess is fine. You have to have a higher power. Uh, Alcoholics Anonymous is right. You can't quit drinking without the help of a higher power. So what to speak of drinking? You can't drop these mental habits of creation of the individual without a higher power to bless you. A higher will, a stronger mind to overcome the materially conditioned mind and stop it from its habitual activities. And this is the meaning of merging with Shiva, as I went over in a recent video. Shiva will say, come on, come on. <laughs> You're my friend. Come on, come closer, come closer. And one day he opens the door and says, come on, come on, merge with me, come on. And then when you can relax, and trust and let go, it happens. And that is really the end of suffering. That's really what we're all looking for. <laughs> that resolves that primary tension in the mind of wanting to be an individual. And from that point on, life is fun. That's the real aim of yoga and self-realization. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.